Here I am using the Two Legged Running Sugar Structure Kit by Innovative Sugar Works. You will find a link to their official website in the description below this tutorial. So this is what you'll find in the box and you'll get a full set of detailed instructions. Now, when you're following the instructions, make sure you follow them carefully. Some of the joints, depending on how you want your bear to stand, will need tightening up an awful lot more than others. So bear this in mind. I do tighten mine up off camera. It completely depends how you want to shape your teddy bear cake. I'm going to speed this section up. I just want to give you an idea on just how easy they are to fit together. So they have a thread inside them and you literally just screw each piece into their corresponding piece. So follow the instructions. I will speed this up and show you what we will end up with. So that's the first leg completed and I'm now going to repeat this process with all the other parts of the body. Now that both legs have been made, we're going to start making the torso for our teddy bear. We are now going to attach this to the legs. So this is what your structure will look like so far. The next part we need to do is simply add the arms. So just following the instructions that have come in the box, I have decided to make both arms first and then apply it to the structure that I already have. So take your time and simply thread each piece onto one another. Now, taking each arm, simply thread them directly onto your structure. All you need to do now is tighten up the joints so it's suitable for the cake that you are making. I'm now going to show you how to add it to the base because we are going to be screwing this into some wood. But this is the basic shape to hold our structured cake in place. Taking a piece of plywood, simply draw on a 12 inch round circle. Using a jigsaw, you now simply want to put around the shape that you have just drawn on your plywood. And this is what you will end up with, and this is going to be the base for our teddy bear. In order to make this plywood food grade, we're simply going to add that 12 inch round cake board. Now you'll notice another hole. I have cut this hole out just using a Stanley knife. And it's the same size as the base of that structure that we've just put together. I'm just going to stick it onto my plywood using some special tape that has some glue on there. But you can use any type of glue because none of this is actually going to be touching your cake. In order to add the structure to the plywood, it comes with three screws. Now you can place these directly into the wood using either a screwdriver or a drill. Just make sure that they are in there firmly because this is going to be holding your structure in place. So this is the structure you'll have so far. Now using this form board, which is non-toxic, we are now going to add some layers so that we can actually have somewhere to place the cake. So here I have a five inch round cake board with a hole drilled into the centre. This is so that I can place it directly on my structure. You want to cut out two round circles from this form board. Now that you have your five inch round circle, simply get a ruler and using a pen, draw a line down the centre of each one. Using a Stanley knife, we are then going to cut away some of this foam board. It's actually filled inside there so that we can pull it away. The paper keeps it non-toxic, but it will give us something to wrap around the actual structure so that it sticks on there. So this is what it will actually look like. You can see an indentation down the centre and it will slot in there nicely. 
Now on the other piece, I'm just going to repeat this process, but I'm also going to add a hole to the center. So we will have a piece of foam board going underneath the structure, a piece of foam board going on top of the structure, both stuck together. So the structure's actually in the middle of both of the pieces. And then finally, the completely, totally, not like food grade cake board that I have with the hole in the center, I'm choosing to put on the top. Even though this foam board is non-toxic, the reason I want to do this is because it's not technically classed as food grade. Okay, so now you have all of your pieces. All you need to do is stick them together. Now you simply want to repeat that process for, but for the next joint where the head's actually going to be. But this time you want a four inch round. So I've taken the top actually off the frame just to make it more simple. I have already cut out my two pieces of foam board. And as you can see, I've taken away the indentation in the center. And here I have a cake drum. You can use a cake board if you want. And I'm literally just going to stick them all directly onto the frame and then place it back on there. Now we can start building our teddy bear. We're going to start by building up the body of our bear. Now for this, I have four six inch round, four and a half centimeter deep cakes it holds a hell of a lot of cake i was going to do the head out of cake as well but because this is just for a tutorial and i realized just how much cake it actually needed i'm actually choosing to do the head from rice krispie treats but you can always do yours from cake so to attach these onto my structure i'm first of all going to take off the arms so just gently unscrew it and place this to one side You'll notice I've also taken off a part. Now that's so that I can put a hole in each one of these cakes. This will just help me place it directly onto the structure and make sure that each one is on there perfectly. And it won't be as messy if you do it this way. So if you just place a hole directly in the top of each one of your cakes, and then we're simply going to be layering them with a thin layer of buttercream, before we start on the legs. In total, for the cakes, the arms, the legs and the head, to crumb coat and fill, you will need to make two batches of my buttercream. I will leave a link for that for you in the description below this video as it is a separate tutorial. When it comes to the final piece of cake, place it on there, then you will need to carve a small amount away in order to be able to add the final part of the structure on there. Now add the rest of your structure gently to the top and just gently screw it into place. So this is what we have so far. I now want to crumb coat this before we start making anything else. I've carved a little bit more of the cake away and all I'm doing is literally covering this with buttercream. You'll also notice I've tilted it forward to give it more of an effect, more gravity defying if you like. Just get it how you want it. I am making the legs, the arms and the head from Rice Krispie Treats and for this tutorial you're going to need four batches of this particular recipe. So for every 150 gram of Rice Krispies, we will be melting 300 gram of marshmallows in a pan of butter just to prevent the marshmallows from actually burning. So all you need to do once your marshmallows are melted, I like to leave them in the actual pan just because the pan's really hot and then just stirring your Rice Krispie treats. We're going to start working with these straight away whilst they're still really hot. This is what it will look like when they're all mixed together. All you want to do now, taking some butter, if you just grease your hands with it, it will help you handle the Rice Krispie treats. And then I am literally just going to wrap them around the actual supports on the legs and just 
build them up. Now you will find it can be a bit difficult whilst they are warm to actually stick to the leg. But a good tip for you, once you've got them all on there, if you just wrap the leg really tightly in cling film and place the cake in the fridge, they will set really, really hard and be on there really, really firm. So simply build up both of your legs. It will take some time and get them exactly how you want them. You just need one batch of Rice Krispie Treats for the legs and then we're going to move on to the head. So this is what my legs look like. Now remember, they still need to be crumb coated at some point. I keep on adjusting the frame to get it just how I want. I think I might end up having leaning a bit further forward soon. And I think that foot will look better if it's touching the board more. But now I'm going to show you how to do the head. Now remember, you can always do the head from cake. I'm choosing to do mine from Rice Krispie Treats because this is literally just being made for a tutorial and I've already baked so many cakes. So here I have two six inch ball tins and I have made two batches of my Rice Krispie Treats this time. So you want 300 gram of Rice Krispies to 600 gram of marshmallows. Keep on greasing my hands and simply fill both of those tins and push them down really hard. Now this is what you will end up with and I have found that the poly dowels you can buy fit lovely over these frames. Because the head is so high I want to make sure there's some extra support there because the actual support that already exists will only cover about one of these ball tins. So I'm just going to place a hole directly into my Rice Krispie Treats using one of the poly dowels. Do this for both of them and make sure you can get them out of the tin easily. And then I'll show you how to place this directly onto your cake support. So you can see the poly dowel in the centre just there. Now all I'm going to do with these Rice Krispie Treats that I've just made, I'm going to take them out of my ball tin. I'm going to trim some off one of them, just off the base, just so it's about like a four inch flat circle so it goes in that support lovely. And I'm going to attach them to everything using buttercream. When this head has set slightly, because I'm going to be placing it back in the fridge, it will then be crumb coated along with the legs. Before I actually make the arms, all I'm doing now is crumb coating the cake and I will place it back in the fridge just to allow it to set. So you want to cover both of your legs and the head. For the arms, because I've actually got something to thread it onto, first of all, you need to make one more batch of Rice Krispie Treats. So that's 150 gram of Rice Krispies to your 300 gram of marshmallows. Now using a small round cutter, if you just pick up the Rice Krispie Treats and push them in like I am here, you'll end up with a perfect round shape. I am then using the poly dowel, which fits around these supports wonderfully, to cut a hole in the centre and I simply thread them directly onto the arms, push them into place, repeat this for the other arm and crumb coat them both. So that is your bare structure assembled. Now I've just got my arms wrapped in cling film just whilst it's been in the fridge. But I want to cover the board now because you've got to remember our bear is completely covered in piped buttercream. So we need to do this first. I'm choosing to use the Renshaw's Ready to Roll Pink Fondant. And all I'm going to do is roll it in between my 5mm spacers. I'm going to cover half of the board first but make it look more like a... More like a fabric kind of effect so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth and then I'm going to repeat that for the back of the board. Once we have done this we will make the fondant accents that need to go on our teddy bear first so the mouth, the nose and the ears and then we can 
finally get to piping that time-consuming but extremely effective fur. Now these parts are super easy to make but they're very important because they add the most important features to your teddy bear. So I've got a couple of different round cutters, some icing sugar, cocktail sticks, edible glue, a small rolling pin and here I'm using the main colour, the grey fondant. Now I like to shape things with my hands. Now for the mouth of the teddy bear you want to push it down just like I am doing here and start by creating an oval shape. There we have it. Now it's still quite thick and I want it to be thick but then using your thumbs if you just push in at the top you can turn that oval shape so it's a bit more like a love heart. I'm then going to use one of my round cutters to place an indentation on this so that I have the perfect smiley face and I'm going to be using the cocktail sticks just to add a few more indentations. So if you just do this first, then we will be creating the ears. I'm choosing to use the fuchsia pink, the same one I have on the board for the teddy bear's nose. Remember, you can use any colours that you want to. And we can finally add them to our teddy bear, leave them to set, and then start adding that fur. Now, using some edible glue, I'm simply going to glue all of my fondant ascents into place directly on my crumb coated cake. I will then use some cocktail sticks just to help keep this in place and the same with the nose. Now, all we need to add are the ears, again just using some edible now we can make a start on the fur. Now for this bear I have used six batches of my buttercream in total, around 1.5 kilogram of butter. I'm using the disposable piping bags. I have made, or should I say turned, some of my buttercream into a light grey and then just added a bit more of my black food colour in to make the darker grey. And I am using the Gem 234 Large Grass Piping Nozzle. So, once you've placed this into your piping bag, to get that two-toned effect, it's very easy. Take some of the darker grey colour and using a knife, just go around the outsides of your piping bag. The cup will help Hold it in place for you so you don't end up in a sticky mess. I am then simply going to fill the centre of this with the lighter grey colour and it is as simple as that. And then we're going to start the painstaking process of piping our amazing me to you teddy bear. Now as you can see here I've already started piping the bear and I'm working from the legs upwards. Now I find piping quite therapeutic. If you just take your time, you literally just want to put some pressure on the piping bag itself. But make sure your hand is above the actual buttercream. You don't want the buttercream coming out of the other end of the piping bag. Work your way from the bottom of the cake upwards and a gentle squeezing motion and pull your hand away whilst you're doing it. Now this recipe that I have used is perfect for piping, crumb coating and filling cakes. I've never had any issues with it and use it for all of the fur because I do make a lot of teddy bear cakes. I will speed this process up for you so you can slowly see the bear actually coming together and the difference that this process makes. All we need to do now is add our teddy bear's eyes. All I have done for this is rolled out two balls of Renshaw's jet black fondant. I'm also choosing to add a bow to my teddy bear's head and for this I have used a Karen 
Davis mould. It's completely up to you whether or not you add the bow, but it will add a lovely finishing touch. Now let's see what the completed bear looks like, shall we? And there we have it, our completed walking teddy bear cake. Now I understand you may be watching this thinking that's a hell of a lot of hard work and who's going to pay for a cake like that? All I can say is at the moment I am pretty sure I'll be the only one in Chesterfield who can do a walking teddy bear cake. That is what will make you stand out as a baker and help you sell your creations for what they are worth. You need to be creating things that other people aren't creating or they're just not sure how to create them. If you're the first one to do something and you start a trend and people are willing to pay for it. Happy baking everyone and I will be back soon with more new tutorials. I really hope I've helped you again today and I absolutely love these kits and there are four different ones available. So make sure you check them out. Take care, everyone, and I'll be back soon.